I think the most difficult part about moving into a tiny house, there's very limited storage. So having very intentional objects that you've selected that are functional, as well as high quality has been a really amazing curation process. So immediately when you come in, you are now in the dining slash living room. I would describe the tiny house as very light, airy, open. I made sure to add a ton of windows just to open the space up. And even more so, actually adding in mirrors as well to really make it feel larger. So you don't feel like you're just in a shed. You actually feel like you're in a house. This is what I like to call the bedroom in my apartment. Hop in the bed here and get my pillows all set up. But as you can see when I lay down, I don't fit. So what I'll do, hop over here and just sleep out of the diagonal, which works out great for me. Living in a tiny home has really helped me be more present. There's no room for access or unnecessary objects. Everything is very curated, very intentional. My name is Sung Yu, I'm 40 years old, and I live in a tiny house in Santa Monica, California, and I pay $1,600 per month. Welcome to my tiny house in Santa Monica, California. I'm a designer and entrepreneur, and I have a children's toy brand called Big Little Universe. Before living in the tiny house, I lived in New York City for over 18 years. I was paying $4,500 a month for an apartment. So I initially moved to California with a partner. That relationship did not work out. And so after that time, I had two places, one in New York and one in California. It was pretty quickly where I decided it was time to get grounded again with my own values. So I made the tiny house my primary residence. I was actually in Rome and I found the space on hot pads and thought it was a scam. <laughs> I hadn't seen anything like it. The photos were posted, it was also very hard to decipher. They had a phone number on there, so I actually ended up calling it and someone did pick up and the interview process was also extremely intense. It was more intense than a regular apartment building. I asked for a video interview to be able to see the space, but even then I was like, it could not be there. This could all be AI for all I know. So I had someone come and check that the space actually existed. Living in Santa Monica has a lot of benefits. I love being close to the ocean. Being able to go on hikes and have access to the outdoors has been really amazing. Living in a tiny house has not only provided my own space, but I'm easily saving a few thousand dollars a month, which has been extremely beneficial as well. There's only been a couple small aspects that I've added to the house, which are small accessories and wall mounted hooks. Otherwise, it's pretty much exactly how it came. The style is very minimal and designed to be energy efficient as well as sustainably built. The house does not require any heat or AC, so I don't have any heating or cooling, but the temperature is regulated by concrete panels, which is water resistant, weatherproof, and extremely durable. I do use a small portable heater in the winter if it is colder weather. I think the most difficult part about moving into a tiny house, there's very limited storage. So having very intentional objects that you've selected that are functional, 
as well as high quality has been a really amazing curation process. You know, narrowing down like technology was pretty simple. I felt like going through different objects or tools was also pretty simple because you come to realize you really don't need that many things. There is literally a container that I have under my sink that I spent at least a couple months looking for because I needed something to be a specific size and material. I think patience is going to be one thing that could be tested living in a tiny house. I think that the main misconception of living in a small space is that it's not possible, but I think it's one of the most amazing gifts and experiences that I've had. When you walk in, this is the main area, which is my work area as well as living room. You see my open closet. I guess you could also say it's a walk-in closet. I spend majority of my day sitting right in this space with my laptop, and this is where majority of my work is done. I'm pretty particular about how I curate my wardrobe because I have so little space. Everything has a versatility or a purpose. The position of the home and the amount of natural light in this house is what really helps the space feel a lot larger than it really is. The kitchen area is where majority of the storage is. I love tools and I love high quality tools. So I have different types of scissors that I've collected throughout the years because it's just a great tool to have. I cook pretty much every day. This particular tiny house did not have a full kitchen. How I solve for that is with a double burner that sits outside of the home. It functions extremely well and is completely sufficient to be able to cook. I think that the process of cooking is actually simplified because I need to be extremely efficient about how I prep ingredients. I'm also very aware of exactly what ingredients and how much are left over in my fridge. So in terms of guests, maximum, I've had two people stay in the outdoor space, but indoors I've only had one guest at a time. To the right of the kitchen is my bathroom, also very minimal and has open storage, which allows for more space. The bathroom sink face is one of my favorite features in the house. It's made of a recycled rubber. To the left of the living room and kitchen is my bedroom. The bedroom is my sanctuary, it's wonderful, and it's a full-size bed. The plywood that surrounds the bed creates this really serene and warm environment. The light in the room is the main light that's completely adjustable to many different settings, which is also a very comfortable and soothing experience. The position of the bedroom allows me to sleep north, which is really great feng shui. I have no regrets about moving into a tiny house. What I was seeking was to feel grounded and to feel completely okay on my own. I think that's what really helped that transition not feel so jarring or difficult. There were definitely challenges, but realigning with what my values really were and what is like most significant in my life was what helped that transition. I think for those who are curious about tiny house living, the first thing I would do is to observe and take a look at your belongings and what really has meaning in your life and what is just a nice to have. I would start there and start to evaluate how you could potentially transition into a tiny house. I've thought a lot about designing tiny homes. So my longer term plans is to build a tiny house community. I really, really love the experience of living in this space and the benefits of learning intentional living. I would love to share that by building a community in the future, but for now, I'm not leaving. <laughs>
My name is Precious Price. I am 26 years old and I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I built a tiny house in my backyard for about $35,000. I decided to build this tiny home because my house, my three bedroom, two and a half bathroom house felt too large for me. After looking in the backyard, realizing that, hey, if I put a tiny house back there, I'll be able to move in and then I can fully rent this house out. I purchased this property that the tiny house sits behind in October of 2019. And the purchase price for this home was $196,000. I was renting the primary structure full time because I was working as a consultant and traveling during the week. So I had the flexibility to rent it out at least Monday through Fridays. So the initial plan for the tiny house was in the middle of the global pandemic. So I actually did have a good amount of money saved. I was already doing short-term rentals within my primary home for about six months. Once we were able to get started with the build and I was able to begin renting out the home again, I pretty much just used those funds or those earnings from Airbnb to then go toward this structure and finishing it. When I started building this tiny house, how I financed it was through my own credit cards in addition to cashing out a few of the stocks that I had from my nine to five. So my budget for building the tiny house was about $25,000. By the time we finished, we were over budget $10,000 and spent total $35,000 on the tiny house. As the initial contractors were kind of getting through the work, I could slightly tell that some things were being done wrong, but because I was not familiar with this process or I had never gone through anything like this, I let it go on a little further than it needed to. And that is why we lost a little bit of money in the beginning. In addition to that, I would say another major mistake was actually how we were purchasing materials. I purchased a lot up front, including some wood for handmade cabinets that you can probably clearly see we did not do handmade cabinets at all. And that was a mistake and a cost on my end. Originally, the tiny house was for me, but after going through the build process, being over budget, behind schedule, we immediately ended up deciding to rent it on Airbnb just to recoup some of those costs pretty quickly. First year we did short-term rentals, second year we did long-term rentals. And now I've decided to move into the tiny house myself just to experience some tiny living in addition to saving some cash as well. If I was to describe my tiny home for someone who has never been here, I would literally just describe it as a studio apartment. So immediately when you come in, you are now in the dining slash living room. I would describe the tiny house as very light, airy, open. I made sure to add a ton of windows just to open the space up. And even more so, actually adding in mirrors as well to really make it feel larger. So the blues kind of gives like a cool feel, but also again, just opens up the space so that you don't feel like you're just in a shed. You actually feel like you're in a house. I love this little breakfast nook area. It's usually where I'm grabbing drinks. Once you come around here and through, you are then in the kitchen. The kitchen is honestly my favorite part of the house because a lot of people are really surprised that there is, for the most part, a full-size fridge. We have an induction cooktop within the kitchen in addition to a full-size sink. And then there's a ton of counter space. At least for me, it's a pretty good amount. Right across from the kitchen is where we have the bathroom that then slides closed and open for the barn door, which honestly creates a really cool space as well. So when we step into the bathroom, we're immediately met with these glass shower doors. It was imperative for me to put glass doors here just because it opens up the space you're able to see through and it doesn't feel as small. There's a full shower, which is honestly perfect, and a little window as well, just because again, every single space must have windows to just make it feel bigger. And then coming around, just adding more shelf space as well, just so that I can store even more. And of course, once you turn around from that bathroom, you then see the library ladder, which leads up to the loft. 
One thing that I don't particularly enjoy about the tiny home is the clearance within the loft. All you can really do up there is lay down and sleep. I would love it if there was a little more clearance and a little more space for me at least to sit upright and maybe have a little bookshelf up there as well. So it's pretty spacious, honestly. The folks in the primary home totally have privacy from the people in the tiny house. There's actually even a separate trail or entrance on the other side of the house that folks who are renting the tiny home can then use to access the house. So they totally actually don't even interact for the most part outside of if they wanna share the fire pit access in the backyard. I do have a mortgage on this home currently and the price that I pay per month for that mortgage is about $1,200. With renting the home out how I am now, the renters or the tenants actually pay that mortgage cost and then some. So the main house, it's a three bedroom, two and a half bathroom home that I rent out as separate suites. So three separate suites. Each suite costs anywhere between about $850 to $1,000 per month, depending on whether or not there is a private bathroom or a shared bathroom. So now being in the tiny house myself, in addition to saving costs, which was a major driver for me moving back here, the other piece was actually getting ready to start the next project or build that I'd like to do on this lot. I do have the option to extend the livable space that I have within the primary home. So at that point, we would have the primary house, the attached guest suite, and then of course this tiny house that sits in the backyard. Honestly, putting a structure in your backyard provides a ton of options, whether it's actual rental income like I've been able to do, or even again, just like a secondary structure that you may be able to live out of yourself and then rent your primary home. In addition to just the options I'm super excited that it's gonna create for my family long-term in terms of maybe some multi-generational living down the line. A lot of people might call this place just a room or a closet, but to me, it is home. Living in such a small space really makes you be grateful for the things that you do have. Any space can be made into a home, no matter how big or how small that space is, you just gotta put some love into it. Welcome to my apartment. My name is Alex, I am 23 years old, and I live here in my 95 square foot New York City apartment. I work part-time as a barber, part-time as a bike messenger, and full-time as a content creator. I am paying $1,100 a month. I grew up in upstate New York, but now I live here in the East Village. This neighborhood has a lot of different kinds of people in it, anywhere from students to senior citizens to everywhere in between, and it creates a very fun feel. Because of that student though, there's a lot of loud noises on the weekends, but it's just part of living here. This is the entrance to the building. The building itself is five floors tall, and each of those five floors each has 10 apartments, three shared bathrooms, and two shared showers. There are no amenities in the building, so there's no dishwasher, no laundry, nothing like that, so you're on your own for all of it. I do not pay any utilities to live here because they are all included in my rent. That can cover everything from my electricity to my heat to my hot water. The only other bill that I have besides my rent is my Wi-Fi, which costs me $50 per month. My main priorities when looking for a place to live were the location as well as I really wanted to find a place where I could live just by myself without any roommate. I wanted to move to Manhattan for the convenience. I don't like taking the train a lot so I'm very happy now that I can walk everywhere Thank you. as well as I have a terrible sleep schedule so it's nice that stores and restaurants are open 24 hours near me. So of course I went online and went to Zillow which is where I found this apartment. The process of getting this apartment was actually very simple. All I had to do was submit all of my paperwork and then just move in. It's 
the fees that I had to pay to move in here were just my first month's rent, which was $1,000, as well as my security deposit, which was also $1,000. Thankfully, there was no broker fee to move in here, which is very rare for New York City. This is what I like to call the bedroom in my apartment. It is where I have my bed all the way in the back against this wall. As you can see, it is a twin size mattress that fits completely wall to wall this way. Now it is a twin, so it's a little bit narrow, but it's only me that sleeps on it and I really don't mind it. Whenever I wanna to go to bed at night, I'll simply just kick off my shoes like usual, hop in the bed here and get my pillows all set up. But as you can see, when I lay down, I don't fit. So what I'll do, hop over here and just sleep out of the diagonal, which works out great for me. The apartment itself has no attached bathroom to it. And that's because you'll find it right down this way, down the hallway. On each floor, there are three toilets. And next to the three toilets, there are also two showers. Now, once you step inside to the shower, you have to remember to bring your towel and your shower caddy because you do share them with your neighbors. Sometimes you'll see your neighbors walking around in the hallway in either a towel or a bathrobe, but you sort of just get used to it. Some of the apartments in the building don't have this view, and I really appreciate the fact that my apartment does have it. It looks especially beautiful when it's snowing out. It's very cozy in here, so I like to sit on the bed and read sometimes. And right now, I'm rereading The Odyssey. This side of the kitchen is where I do my cooking at, on this little cooktop, and some more food things stored in this dresser. The sink is in the corner for the kitchen and the bathroom, and a medicine cabinet right above it. This is the table in my apartment that I eat at every day. I was walking by a restaurant one day that was going out of business, and all their furniture was on the street, so I took this table, and now this is its new home in my apartment. In the corner here, I have this closet, which is really great because I can keep all of my clothes stored right inside of it. I am actually a licensed barber, so sometimes I like to cut hair in my apartment here. And right now I have my old neighbor actually, but a great friend of mine, Bella, here to get a haircut. This is my barber kit. It is everything that I use to be able to cut hair. It also happens to be one of the most expensive things that I own. Let's do like three quarters of an inch. I trust you. Living in the building can sort of feel like you're in the college dorms by the fact that you share bathrooms and you share showers. There used to be a little bit of a rodent problem in the building, but the management decided to adopt a cat to fix that problem. So now the cat just eats the mice instead. Sometimes the building smells like incense, sometimes it smells like bubble gum, and sometimes it's garbage, and sometimes it's just vanilla ice cream. Down the hallway here is where you'll find your mailboxes as well as your trash chute on the left here. Behind me, you'll see there's a fancy security monitor and that security system cannot help me out when my bike got stolen a few months ago. So now I just keep it upstairs. My mom has come to visit me one time and it was the same reaction she gave me as everybody else does. First, you're amazed by how small it is, but once you spend more than 10 minutes here, you realize it's just like any other place. Since I work as a bike messenger, every time I come home from work, I have to carry my bike up these four flights of stairs. It gets pretty tiring sometimes, so it's definitely a good workout. I believe that I do have a good deal here. I know it's a lot of money, but for the location I'm in, the fact that all my utilities are included, I feel like I'm paying a pretty fair price. The main benefit of living in such a small space is that it really makes you appreciate the things that you have and be a minimalist. You really just can't go out and buy a bunch of random things because you just don't have the space to store them. I like living alone because everything is exactly how I want it. It can be decorated the exact way that I want, as well as if I'd like it to be messy, it's messy, or if I'd like it to be clean, then it's clean. I've been living here for two years now, and I'm currently working on my third year, which I think will be my last year living here. And I'm very excited to see what the next chapter of my life is.